there. Welcome. This is the Kelly's Astrology Podcast, where you can find insight, guidance, and understanding through astrology. I'm Kelly, and I'll be your host. Hi. This week's featured astrology event is the full moon in Capricorn, which arrives Friday, June 21st or Saturday, June 22nd, depending on where you are. So Friday night on the 21st, the moon is going to look big, bright, and beautiful. Thanks for joining me for another episode of the Kelly's Astrology Podcast. The day before the full moon will be the solstice where the sun will enter the sign of cancer. This is an important marker in the sun's annual cycle. For me personally, I can hardly believe that we are halfway through 2024 already. As we reach the solstice, it's a great time to reflect on the last six months since late December and also to consider your intentions for the next six months, the second half of the year. There are a number of ways to break down the annual solar cycle, the sun's journey over the course of the year, but by far the two most important are via the solstices, the December solstice and the June solstice. The solstice is also a really lovely time for celebration. So it's a a time marking moment, but it's also a celebration event. So whether it's midsummer or midwinter for you, I hope you get the chance to gather with loved ones and to perhaps pause, reflect and refocus for the next six months. The solstice is the standing still of the sun. And so taking some time to be still and to sit with wherever you're at, whatever you have going on, can be a really lovely way of honoring the celestial light and the solar journey this coming week. Working with the changing nature of light in a birth chart via forecasting is one of my favorite things to share with clients. I'll be teaching about predicting with progressions in my next online astrology class starting this July. You can find out more or register via kellysastrology.com. Personally, I always think it's quite striking when there is a full moon that happens right near the solstice. And that is the case this third week of June. We have the solstice itself and the start of cancer season, which is June 20th or June 21st, if you're in Australia. And then within 24 hours, we've got that full moon in Capricorn happening. So that's a lot of energy shifting, a lot of kind of peak and transition moments coming together in a short space of time. We have a peak moment of the sun hitting the solstice, and we have a peak moment of the moon with the full moon. So at a general level, you could expect a change in your focus, your priorities. You can also expect a change in the way you feel, especially with cancer season starting. You might also experience some insight that helps you release or end something that's no longer sustainable for you. So let's dive into the full moon itself. The full moon is at one degree Capricorn and it's on Friday the 21st if you're in Canada and the US. If you're in places like the UK, Europe or Australia, that full moon will technically be at its strongest on Saturday the 22nd. Experientially, we could think about the 21st and the 22nd as full moon days this month. So that one degree of Capricorn is the place of the full moon. For the most personal take on the full moon, take a moment to note the topics of the house in your personal chart that has Capricorn on the cusp. They're going to be the areas of your life that will be illuminated, that will be in the spotlight under this full moon. Because of that spotlight quality, a full moon can bring clarity, can help you see things, can help you understand things. It can also help you tune in to what you really need. The full moon can point to the importance of forgiveness and release. And so that might mean that you learn something that you didn't know around the topics of your Capricorn house, or it might show that you're ready to make peace or to let go of something around this area of your life too. Now, another interesting feature of the moon as it becomes full this month in June is that it will also be in a technical condition known as out of bounds. This relates to the moon and its distance from the ecliptic via its declination. So it's a little bit technical, but it does give us a quality of energy that's worth knowing about. 
the concept of a planet being out of bounds brings forward this wild card energy. And in that condition, the moon knows no limits, no boundaries, no rules, that type of thing. So the moon is both full, which we know is like peak emotion, but it's also out of bounds and it's not held back or it's not paying attention to convention. It's not bound by rules or regulation. The moon out of bounds is not following social convention and it's not really paying attention to the generally accepted ways of doing things. So this out of bounds wildcard quality really does add something extra and something different to this full moon in Capricorn. Planets in Capricorn are normally quite reserved and really tuned in to expectations, to rules, to regulation, and to guidelines. When that planet happens to be out of bounds, that's not the case. The wild energy of the out of bounds can kind of override some of the typical Capricorn themes. So what that means for the full moon is that there may be even more than the usual full moon wildness or full moon madness uh, this month. And that's because the full moon will happen with the moon at 28 degrees of declination, which is really far outside the bounds of the normal pathway and the normal patterns of planets in the sky. And so this moon is like not connected to anything regular or familiar. It's in this kind of uh, inventive place. It's playing outside. You know, if you think about a sports field, the moon is, is not playing the game that's going on in the field. It's doing something different, totally outside the stands. In your own life, this might be a chance to throw off some restraints or to consider an out of the ordinary possibility. The image that's coming into my mind is when the Taylor Swift concerts were happening, you know, the middle of last year, late last year, it was middle of last year in kind of North America, late last year in Australia, you know, most people had bought tickets and were in the stand listening to and participating in the concert. And then because it was such a popular event, there were people who couldn't get tickets, who had gathered outside the stadium, obviously hadn't paid and were just doing the best they can to sort of hear the music filtering through in this kind of um, out of character, out of the ordinary setting. And so this moon that's out of bounds is that sort of thinking outside the box doing what you can in a situation that maybe you can't get to the main thing, but there really is that sense of that inventive, uh, creative, doing things differently quality. That's the big thing for the full moon being out of bounds. So in your own life, this might be a chance to throw off some restraints or to consider an out of the ordinary possibility. It might point to a kind of groundbreaking event or experience, especially around the topics of both the Capricorn and Cancer houses in your chart. So this full moon in Capricorn is not quite as it appears, and it follows that in life, a situation may not be what it originally appears to be. There may be more going on, or you may be able to approach it from this unconventional, creative, or innovative way. Shortly after the full moon, the moon is going to make an opposition to Venus in Cancer. And this will really highlight relationships, relational themes, and interpersonal dynamics as being hugely important and really highlighted in the spotlight under this full moon. So that might give you some insight or some knowing about something that needs repair or fixing in a close relationship. You might find yourself grappling with how to show your affection and your kind of sweet feelings to someone that you care about, which would be the Venus in Cancer part, while still keeping up with your duties and obligations, which would be the Moon in Capricorn part. So that full moon uh, aspect to Venus does bring in those themes of like, how can we unite even when we might be in different places or we might have different priorities? So it's an opposition aspect from the moon and Venus, but it is flavored by Venus. So that idea of coming together with a place of some differences or a little bit of that opposing polarity energy, how can we navigate that? The full moon in Capricorn, of course, is ruled by Saturn in Pisces, and that's going to be an important factor to consider with the full moon too. 
So the full moon is ruled by Saturn in very soulful Pisces. So this is going to add an emotional quality, maybe a mystical quality, and it might even add a bit of a vulnerable feeling into this full moon. It's going to bring forward emotion and feeling because the ruler of the full moon is in a water sign. We already know that a full moon is about raising emotion and activating feelings. So there's a lot of emotion and a lot of feeling coming through for this full moon. You might be especially sensitive or tender or find that you crave quality time with people you trust or have known a long time. This full moon in Capricorn ruled by Saturn in Pisces is very quiet. It's very reflective. It's very introspective. Because it's happening so soon after the sun has changed signs, it really brings forward a much quieter, less social energy than what the previous few weeks have uh had us experiencing. And so it's a real mood shift this month, this full moon in early Capricorn. Now, Saturn in Pisces is uh, considered to be in the third place or the third house relative to the full moon itself. So if you think about the full moon in Capricorn, Saturn in Pisces relationship to that is via the third house or third place. And that can really emphasize friendship. It can emphasize sibling connections, and it can also highlight communication, self-expression, everything to do with kind of talking and connecting with others. So even though you might be full of feeling, you might be really sensitive, you might be processing some things, you might be healing old stuff, you know, the feelings that coming up can be uh, the, the full spectrum. Pisces is like the whole gamut of feelings from happy feelings to sad feelings and everything in between. But it's still going to be really important to talk about what's inside your heart under this full moon. Another feature about Saturn that's important for this full moon, because Saturn's the ruler of the full moon and really flavors the full moon too, Saturn is stationing and will go retrograde the week after the full moon. And that repeats some of the solstice themes of pausing, of reflecting, and of reassessing. Saturn itself will go no further forward for now. And so this full moon might help you tune into an area of your life where you have gone as far as you can for now. So there's a lot of clarity, there's a lot of insight, there's a lot of questioning convention that comes out with this full moon, but there's also this recognition between the full moon being ruled by a planet about to go retrograde and the full moon happening right around the solstice that we might need to sit still for a period of time. You know, the solstice is about the stillness of the sun and a planet about to go retrograde, that planet is not moving for a period of time. So maybe you do hit a bit of a delay or a roadblock, but I would take that as a really important sign to acknowledge and to work with now that slowness, that maybe not progressing for a period, that doing some treading water or kind of consciously choosing to put yourself into a holding pattern may be the perfect thing, at least for 48 hours under this full moon. Maybe it's a bit longer, maybe it's a week, maybe it's a couple of weeks, but we want to give ourselves that time to have all of that and that sort of flood of emotion and that illumination of the full moon to have that kind of filter through our entire being so that we really embody it, we can integrate it, and then we can respond with that new awareness. So this full moon is not in a hurry. So even though you're feeling things and you're coming to understand things, you don't have to immediately respond or react. So slowness, uh, reflection, introspection, great choices for how to manage your time and energy under this very deep, very thought-provoking, but really still full moon in Capricorn. So there is a lot to chew on with this full moon in Capricorn coming Friday or Saturday, depending on where you are. Thanks so much for joining me. If you're enjoying the show, please like, subscribe, or follow along wherever you are listening. Take care, everyone, and I'll be back to share more again next week. Bye for now.